According to HAL's annual report of the year 2020 to 2021, Hindustan Aeronautics has responded to a request for information that was issued in June 2020, for the future lead-in fighter training system requirement by the Australian Department of Defence. Other contenders in the competition include Hawk Mark 128 aircraft of BAE Systems, T-7A of Boeing, M346 aircraft of Leonardo, and the T-50 Advanced Jet Trainer of the Korean Aerospace Industries. Australian Defence Ministry is yet to issue the request for proposal, in which Hindustan Aeronautics lead-in fighter trainer will participate, and officials have said that once the production of the 83 Tejas Mark 1A fighter jet begins, HAL will develop the first lift aircraft. Hindustan Aeronautics has also received interest from the Philippines Coast Guard for the procurement of seven advanced light helicopters and eight Dornier 228 aircraft through the Government of India line of credit. Hindustan Aeronautics has signed a memorandum of understanding with the public sector firm Metals and Minerals Trading Corporation of India, who will be the channelizing partner for import of palm oil from Malaysia for the likely counter trade for sale of the Tejas Mark 1A fighter jets to the Malaysian Air Force, that is looking for 26 aircraft to be purchased from 2025 onwards. Due to its budgetary issues, Malaysia has expressed interest in a barter payment system by trading in palm oil for 18 fighter jets, and India is the world's largest importer in this sector. Mazagin Dockyard will carry out the model test of the hulls of the P-18 next-generation destroyer and next-generation corvette, to enable finalization of propulsion system and modifying their indigenous design. The first of the six Project 18-class next-generation stealth-guided missile destroyers with enhanced stealth characteristics is expected to be launched by 2028 and will be equipped with electromagnetic railgun, ship-mounted laser weapons, barrack-8 extended-range surface-to-air missiles, and the BrahMos-2 hypersonic cruise missiles. After successful launches from an underwater barge last month, South Korea has successfully tested an indigenous submarine-launched ballistic missile from its 3,000-ton class KSS-3 submarine. Interestingly, it is the same submarine design that has been pitched by South Korea for India's Project 75I, in which South Korean firm Dewu Shipbuilding is now the sole vendor left in the competition after the recent withdrawal by the German firm to Syncrip Marine Systems. The sea trials of India's first floating missile test range INS Anvis will start this month, and it will be commissioned in November. Built by Cochin Shipyard and designed by the DRDO, the 9,000-ton ship will be used to test missiles up to range of 1,500 km deep inside the Indian Ocean, that will speed up futuristic missile projects. While the DRDO missile testing site is under the scanner of the adversaries, the floating missile test range will also allow discrete testing of missiles and torpedoes, especially the two new AD-1 and AD-2 interceptor missiles under the Phase 2 of the BMD program. Indian Navy's Naval Design Bureau has already started work on an indigenous SSN, which was planned to start construction from 2024, with the delivery of the first SSN by 2030. It was expected that the indigenous SSN program will be a quick turnaround program, but it seems that it might have a longer developmental phase, due to which India and Russia have started discussions to lease another Akula class SSN, that will be delivered by 2028. Several experts have said, that procuring three enhanced Calvary class submarines with vertical launching system and air independent propulsion at the same price, will provide a similar capability, while Russia can limit the usage of the leased SSN in combat. Operating two leased SSNs will also stretch operating costs and maintenance expenses for the Indian Navy, as only Russian shipyards are allowed to carry out any repair works. The Indian Air Force will soon get the financial powers to hire aircraft including mid-air refuelers from private companies and even foreign governments. 
The financial powers will allow the Air Force to spend between 100 crores to 200 crore rupees in each case, and officials have said that higher purchasing is different from leasing, as the maintenance of the asset will not be the responsibility of the Air Force in case of hiring. The navies of India and Australia have started the five-day Ozindex 2021 maritime warfare exercise in Australia's Northern Territory, to further enhance their interoperability in the Indo-Pacific region. The Defence Minister Rajnath Singh will also be meeting with his Australian counterpart on 10 September in New Delhi, for the first ever 2 plus 2 meeting between the two countries. Oh, my God.